on this episode of Monday to Monday, I'm joined again by the producer of the show, Emily, and we're going to answer your questions. So if you've been sending us voicemails, texts, you know, to the number in my Instagram bio, we, we see them, we're listening. I know some people are trying to send their music. That's fine. Some people have questions about TikTok, NFTs. That's also fine. You could even just say, hey, sharing some love on a Friday, Monday, whatever. That would be nice too. Anyway, let's get into it. All right. So how's it going, Emily? Happy Friday. Yeah, it's going well. Happy Friday. My God. All right. So here we go. First voicemail. I'm going to play it. Yo, my name is Joel Anset. The Instagram is just at Joel Anset, J-O-E-L-A-N-S-E-T-T. I just saw the post about emerging artists and NFTs, and then I saw your comment, Mike, that said, uh, leave us a voicemail. And, uh, yeah, I'm just barely, barely dipping my toes into what it would look like to collab, uh, in the NFT world, so no idea what I'm doing, but saw the post. Wanted to hit you guys up. All right, have a good one. Thanks for the uh, message. And yeah, you know, a lot of people don't know anything about NFTs, and that's fine because it's still very early. Um, you know, there's some podcasts out there where you could really dive deep. Obviously, Gary V. Check out his V Friends. Um, I think it's even vfriends.com. That's V is in Victor E E friends with an s.com or whatever just google it but you know if you study what gary did a lot of it's about access right um and some people just make art pieces and there's no access and that's okay too but you know do what do what your uh, community wants yeah my number one avo- advice is like talk to your community in fact educate them because look if you drop an nft and none of your followers have a wallet for crypto or for nfts like if they don't have a metamask that's not going to be great because then how are they going to buy it? You know what I mean? If they don't know what ETH is, that's not great. So like, Hey, you could say to your discord, your Twitter, whatever you could say, Hey, look, I'm thinking about doing an NFT. What do you guys want to see in it? And you could be honest, be like, I'm doing some research. I'm following what Gary V did. I'm on the Monday to Monday podcast. Or you could say like, I'm reading some podcasts about this. I'm listening, you know, do whatever you got to do, but ask people what they want to see. So you learn a little bit, but also, you know, be like, who would want to buy my NFT? Because I want to have a real talk with you guys and educate you on how to buy it. Because if you sell the NFT and your fans buy it, that's pretty great. You know, fan supporter family. But if you buy, if you sell the NFT and a bunch of random people buy it because they know you're like a good artist, but they don't really, care about you they just want the nft to flip it that could still work but it might not be what you want you know what i'm saying emily it's like you want the people who care about you to buy the nft at least at least like half of the nft drop that makes sense yeah yeah give them a pre-sale link um what's his tiktok look like he's 149 followers whoa oh 149 not 149k (laughs) Yeah, and what's his last video view count or last three? Uh, around a hundred. That's good. Mm-hmm. See that when we um at VaynerMedia, the ad agency, we don't. Well, you know, I personally look for ten percent engagement on views. Um, when we work with someone, I feel like that's pretty good. So you know, if you have a hundred followers and you're getting over ten views, that's good. Um, you know, you multiply that, you have a million followers and you're getting over hundred K views per TikTok. That's good. That's like what I'm looking for. You know, you get more than that. Great. But if you have hundred K followers and you're only getting a thousand views, it's not the end of the world, but it doesn't look super great to the agencies and brands that are looking for influencers. So just keep that in mind, but, uh, that's cool. So yeah, you have any other comments on that, this call or you want to move it on? I think we're ready to move on. Uh Oh, all right. You could talk about the next call first. I talked too much on that one. All right, here we go. Hey, what's up? My name is miles from a band called the wonderlands at the wonderlands band on Instagram. And I'm just wondering how, as an artist trying to break through, um, you can 
give incentive for your fans to even purchase your NFTs in the first place. I know creating them is a valuable asset, but um, as a smaller artist on the come up trying to break through, how can you uh, incentivize your fans to get invested in your NFTs um, and think they're you know valuable? Thanks. If you were dropping an NFT, what would you do? Like you personally, like I guess you could make an NFT that would give people access to watching you record some of these podcasts for one thirty seven PM, you know, and people want that people want all types of stuff. There's so many people on earth, you know, it's like some people want to have your job and not in a weird way, but, or they just want an inside look on what you do every day. You know, that's like, I know that in the back, like I, in the back of my mind, I know that, but it's weird thinking about that. Like, well, you know, it's like when you were applying for the job, didn't, didn't you want it or no? Yeah. yeah. Well then see, it's like, even think back to when you wanted the job. Like a lot of people are at that point in their lives, you know, Mm -hmm. that's such a good point. Um, so if I was trying to drop an NFT, what would I do? All right. Look, look at NFTs, just like anything else. If you're selling something, whether it's lemonade or buildings, parking lots, whatever, whatever you're selling, people are only going to buy it if they want it. You know what I mean? Like I don't run around the neighborhood being like, Hey, buy a tricycle off me to people who, you know, are too big for a tricycle or like little babies. It doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? It's like, you got to sell stuff to people who want it. So like, if you're asking, why do people care about my NFT? Figure out what they care about. You know, if you know who your biggest supporters are, go to their IG, go to their TikTok, figure out what they're posting about, what they do, figure out where they live, you know, make a Google voice like I did and, or actually how Emily came up with the idea. And it's like, you know, people text or call, you see their area code. You know what I mean? And then you're from Cincinnati, I'm assuming based on the IG bio. I but, talking about me. <laughs> oh no. But um, yeah, I love Cincinnati. So, you know, if people are from Ohio, Kentucky right there on the border um, of Cincinnati, like whatever, figure out as much as you can about the people who you want to buy your NFT and then figure out what you guys have in common. If everyone trying to buy your NFT is also trying to learn how to play the guitar, work that in there somehow. You know, like the, you know, the most rare NFT could come with like seasonal merch drops from the band, but maybe you also give some people a FaceTime guitar lesson because if they really like you, they'll be like, well, dang, I would just FaceTime the guy anyway. But if he's going to, you know, teach me a little bit about the guitar, that's even cooler. You see what I'm saying? I feel like so many people think about NFTs like in terms of flipping them and making money off of them versus thinking about the added value of including some sort of access with them. Oh yeah, and I think um, we should mention the 25 days of Poop that's going on with 137 right now. All right, yeah, tell them about it. Oh God. Um, I was hoping you would do that. Um, All right. Well, what I can say is if you don't know what it is, go ahead and follow one thirty seven PM. Um, we have an internal, we have an internal WhatsApp. That's right. We communicate on WhatsApp. If you don't know what WhatsApp is, you probably don't have any friends and family that live across the international world, but that's okay. Um, WhatsApp is amazing. Um, and yeah, we use it. Gary V even uses it. So that's cool. Check it out. Anyway, yeah, I don't know. Everyone on the NFT chat, or I'm sorry, the WhatsApp chat, our website, 137 PMs, IG, Tyler, Sanan, everyone. They're just like talking about that NFT drop every day. You don't know what it's about, Emily? Come on. No, like I, I know what it's about. I just want to make sure it's explained correctly. Yeah, no, I don't want to even try to explain it correctly. See, that's the thing, guys. Okay, yeah. Guys and girls and everyone. Listen, um, you don't have to be an expert at NFTs and don't be embarrassed about it because a lot of people are not experts. I was talking to someone yesterday and they told me no one's really an expert because it's always changing. So go follow us on 137 PM. Google NFTs 137 PM. We have a lot of articles. We even have entry level articles where you could just learn. But what Emily's talking about, it's like a new hot thing in the NFT world. And it's kind of around, uh, it's almost like attendance prizes, right, Emily? So it's like, Mm -hmm. if you go to our event, you get a kind of like a badge or whatever, you get an NFT to prove you were there. So 
it might not be the most valuable event, but what if you went to like Michael Jackson or Michael Jordan's first basketball game? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That'd be kind of cool. And then you could have it in your wallet forever. I want cool things in my MetaMask wallet. Yeah. And with the 137, 25 days of pull up, they're giving out a code word somewhere in across 137 content every day to get the pull up. Love that. That's how they're doing it. All right. And here's the last voicemail. What's up? My name is Mike Mulda and I am a videographer, event recorder, and I have videos of a variety of different musicians that I've worked with and wanted to see if there's a way to mint these into NFTs, collaborating with the artist to put them out as uh, bodies of work. Love to speak with you more about that, see if that's something that is possible. Um, my Instagram is Mike Molda at Mike Molda, M-I-K-E-M-O-L-D-A. Love to speak with you more about it and uh, seeing what can be done. All right. Much love. Thank you. Have a great day. I mean, hey, it's like what's funny is um, a lot of the answers are kind of the same. But the only reason for that is because the game is the same. You know what I mean? It's like go back 20 years you know, and you were working with what you had then. So it's like, like I said, if you're trying to sell someone something, you better be selling what they want or you're going to get no sales. Sounds pretty simple, but a lot of people don't even think of that. I'll tell you something. Um, I heard Gary V say one time, and I agree, the type of companies he wants to work with are the ones that are making money. And not because of the money, but because he knows it's a good company. Like it's a, it's like a proven, um, theory, you know, it's like, Hey, you could run up on Gary and be like, Oh, I have an idea for this, that, and whatever. I raised some money. People invested in me. I'm ready to go. And you see, that's like one, one option. But if you run up on Gary and you're like, Hey, I'm not making a ton of money, but I have this idea and it's working. See, that's totally different. Cause you're executing, um, you're seeing revenue, you're giving people what they want. So just keep in mind, if you're selling something, you got to be giving people, they have to see the value. It has to be win-win or people, you might have to educate people on the value, but if they don't see the value, I don't know, you might want to change your idea a little bit. Anyway, I'm looking at Mike's IG. I don't see all the videos, but he said he has a lot of music videos. So my opinion when it comes to uh, music and videos, you know, it's, it's pretty complicated when you're involving music files and royalties and publishing and everything in the NFT world. Um, you know, obviously do your research, but what I would do is, um, you know, if it's a live show, you could put the video file on the landing page and your um, NFT could be like the set list from the show. You see what I'm saying? It's like it's like when people bring you here for one reason and they sell you something else, um, not to trick you, but kind of to make the transaction easy. So it's like, you know, like if I was with a musician and we were in the studio, there's a lot of things in the studio that we could turn into an NFT, take a picture of, physically mail it to you, whatever. It doesn't have to be the song, but we could be like, hey, this is from the room where the song was made, or this is from the concert venue where the epic show was made i filmed the show i know the band the band's in on this nft we're all trying to give back but you know we don't want to mess around with all the complications of music just yet um we're learning about it but you know for now you get the sparkly vest i was wearing on stage you see what i mean that makes perfect sense yeah it's like what i will say too is um Get into the NFT game if you want to, learn, and then make your next drop better. You know what I mean? Like you, you can't. It's like dropping music. You know, you see what works, you see what people are reacting to. Double down if you really know what you're talking about and you believe in a song. But um, it's like anything. When you run Instagram ads, run two versions, whichever one's working better. If you believe in the results, go harder on that one. You know. It's like, you're not going to know unless you do it. Like that's, it's cliche, but it's cliche because that's like true. 
And I agree. I figured that out with po- like with podcasts too, like in with because I produce for everyone that's listening. Also, it's still crazy to me that people listen to this. Um, Whoa! But <laughs> it's like I know, like I understand that people do. Um, but like when we're talking, it feels like it's just the two of us. Um, um, now I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, you said you were producing a bunch of podcasts. Oh yeah. So I do things that it's like, I don't know what's going to work until I try like the voicemail. I tried with another one of my podcasts and it just didn't stick. Really? Yeah. Um, like the. You don't, have to, you don't have to shout them out. Yeah, no, of course I'm not going to. But um, it it wasn't like a shade thing or not like it's not because the podcast wasn't good enough. It's just that it didn't make sense for that kind of audience. Like, and we wouldn't have known that. And like, we wouldn't have figured that out for this podcast had I not done it for that podcast. Like, so just you don't know what's going to work until you try it. So, you know, me and Emily are not the end all be all. You know, we're giving our opinion. I've been in the music world for, um, so uh, let me count. Uh, I don't know. Uh, shit. Um, probably like 12, 13 years, right? And I used to tour manage, um, artist manage, producer manage, video director manage. I did a lot of brand deals on the agency side, the artist side, all that. Marketing, TikTok campaigns, um, NFTs now. I'm working with a bunch of brands on NFTs with musicians, um music videos with brands you know i've done a lot and so i bring the um viewpoint from that perspective all those perspectives but if you're watching this and you uh want to talk about anything we said you want to quote us you want to jump in the comments and be like yo i don't agree with this that and whatever we're watching so jump in the comments we could have that conversation you can never you know hurt our feelings if you don't agree that's fine let's just talk about it um but the only reason i'm saying that is because like the last episode uh tyler from the team he texted me and he said yo look at this comment this person uh disagrees with you and i'm like that's amazing because i'm just trying to talk to y'all so like if you disagree or you do agree leave a comment like let's have a conversation you know yeah it doesn't have to be good or bad it's just let's talk about it i know a lot of people have been seeing my ig posts and my tiktok posts Um, I did give like a brief history of different worlds and viewpoints I've seen in the music world, but also for anyone who doesn't know, I've been working with Gary V for a long time, off and on and in different ways. But when you watch his um, YouTube meetings of the past, because, you know, the pandemic kind of slowed us down when he's meeting with musicians of various genres, I'm in the meetings. I might not always be on camera, but, you know, I'm there. So if you guys have any questions, even if you're like, yo, I watched that um, meeting with Gunna. I watched the meeting with Keed, Tierra Whack, you know, Nipsey Hussle, rest in peace. Um, rest in peace forever. But if you um, watch any of those meetings, Faruko, that was a good one. That was recent. That was after the pandemic. You were in that one. Yeah, I'm in that one. Uh, and then we don't film them all. Like we we just met with Nikki Jam's people yesterday. Uh, Nikki Jam's on tour in Europe. He couldn't join us. That's fine. But we'll be talking to him again soon. We didn't record that. Um, you know, and sometimes we get real serious with musicians and we turn the cameras off because these meetings are kind of, how can we help? How can we talk? Let's, let's make the most of our time. It's not really all about YouTube content, but we put it out there because why not? You know, Gary's not really a super private person. If people want to watch the meetings and learn or, jump in the comments, like I said, and leave an opinion, like we're here for it. But I'm just letting everyone know that that is my role within Gary's world, because I know people might be like, oh, I saw Gary repost, but I don't get it. And that's, that's just some inside knowledge. So if you leave a voicemail or a text, we go talk about anything you want. Me and Emily are here. I know everyone leaving voicemails and texts just want to talk about music and yo, get this. If you send your music, we will listen to it. If we can get to it, everyone's sending music and DMs and submissions and I love it. And, you know, that's the goal of the Monday to Monday playlist is to shine some light on people who might not have that chance yet. So keep sending it. But 
don't get mad if I don't playlist you because I might not have had time to listen yet and I'll get there or better yet, just keep submitting. Um, Cause sometimes it's hard to get to everything, but yeah, Emily, I know we talked about it before, but some people get hurt. They get their feelings hurt. And it's like, Hey, I get it actually. Cause I used to, you know, I was coming up at 1.2 in certain ways and I'm still coming up in certain ways and I get it, but I'm just telling you a little, um, a tip. Um, just be patient and keep trying, you know, just keep trying because I'm busy and I can only speak for myself, but you know, some people at Spotify, uh, title, whatever, they might be even more busy than me. I don't know. We don't know. So, you know, maybe they have kids and they got to rush home from work and they're like, dang, I really wish I could check out this emerging artist, but I just don't have time. And that's the end of the story. So just because someone doesn't email you back doesn't mean they don't like you. They might just be busy and think about how busy you are sometimes, you know, anyway, listen, subscribe, like, share. No, I'm just joking. That's how everyone else ends their podcast. I actually don't care. Just do whatever you got to do. And I hope you come back next week. Let's go. Right.